So, yeah, hi everyone. So next we have uh, Prasanna from Frappe. So she'll be talking about journey of Frappe and OSS. So yeah, Prasanna, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. So um, I've been working as a developer at Frappe for the past year and a half. So I'm going to be telling you about how I got introduced to FOSS and Frappe, a little bit about how Frappe is structured as an organization. And I'll also give you a brief intro to the foundation that supports all our work, the Frappe framework. So I was introduced to uh, FOSS through GSOC. In case you don't know what that is, it's an annual event sponsored by Google that aims to get more student developers into open source. So similar to this event, it really spreads the spirit of FOSS. In fact, a little while before I joined, Frappe also held its own version called um, ESOC, which stands for ERP Next Summer of Code. And I think we got some pretty great contributions from that. So anyway, I participated in um, GSOC in 2018 with the Wikimedia Foundation. And I really enjoyed the experience of collaborating with developers from all over the world and the feeling of being part of a community. So after that experience, I was pretty sure I wanted to start my experience at an open source, start my career at an open source company. And um, that's how I started my journey at Frappe. So Frappe is unlike any organization I've ever worked at or heard of. I've also I've done an internship at a startup also a while back. But being a startup also it was nothing like Frappe. So coming to the startup bit, Frappe has been up and running for 13 years but we still follow a startup culture. I've often heard a lot of people using that term. And though at the back of my mind, I knew what it meant, I realized while making this presentation that I have no ex idea exactly what it refers to. So I Googled it, and this is what I found. A startup culture is a workplace environment that values um, creative problem solving, open communication, and a flat hierarchy. So coming to these values, the most striking thing to me when I joined Frappe was the completely flat organization structure. I mean, everyone says it, but usually there is some kind of hierarchy in most organizations, even startups, with a person to report to and a set of people who take most of the company meta-level decisions for you. But at Frappe, I was really surprised to see that everyone was actually at the same level and even had the same role, with just the set of people who had been around for longer acting as mentors. So this means that you get to learn from and communicate with anyone at the company, even the founder himself. So my first week at Frappe itself, Rushab, who is the founder of Frappe, was the one sitting with me and helping me with my projects. So this way, you really get to learn from the best. And um, along with the flat hierarchy, at Frappe, there's complete transparency in everything we do. All company decisions, from operational to meta-level decisions about anything, hires, money, sales, and so on, are taken by the entire company together. In fact, all of our salaries here are transparent too. So um, we have a weekly Friday forum, as we call it also, where we sit together for a couple of hours and discuss about and vote on these things. And we don't go ahead with anything unless it's completely unanimous. At times, of course, people have differences of opinions, but they're always encouraged to speak their mind. And we find common ground and do what's best for the growth of the company and the product. Coming to the creative problem solving aspect of a startup culture, there's always a question that comes up about work that needs to be done and work that you love to do. This is a problem discussed extensively at Frappe. And here, everyone is always encouraged to put what they love to do first. While there is always some operational work, such as support or documentation, for example, which needs to be done however monotonous it is, there's always a fair system put in place to reward such activities. So the freedom for creativity here at Frappe has had some pretty cool results. Um, like we needed a charts library, and one of our developers just went ahead and created a zero dependency JavaScript charting library called Frappe Charts, which now has over 13,000 stars on GitHub and was trending on Hacker News for quite a while. And uh, even we couldn't find a good data table library, so one of our te developers went ahead and built one. Same for Gantt, too. Um, now let me tell you a little bit about the Frappe framework, which is the foundation of the product that we sell, ERP Next. If you don't know, an ERP, which stands for Enterprise Resource Planning, 
refers to a type of software that organizations use, uh, use to manage their day-to-day -day business activities, which includes everything from accounting, procurement, to project management. At FAPE, we use ERPNX not only for our accounting, but it's also the only software we use for uh, team management. Anyway, you could basically call an ERP an operating system for your business. So ERP Next itself has all modules a business would possibly need, and then even some more. The um, core philosophy of the Frappe framework is to write as less code as possible. We prefer configuration over code. And this is what has enabled us to build and maintain a product as com uh, complex as ERP Next, which has thousands of features with just the team of um, 20 developers. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'll just try and give you a quick overview of the magic of the framework and how much it can do. We call it a uh, batteries included, metadata driven, full stack web framework. I know that's a lot of words, but I'll try and explain. Um, this is the tech stack that we use. It's written in Python and JavaScript and works on top of MariaDB or Postgres as the database. So what do we mean by batteries included? So this means that apart from the standard features provided by most frameworks, which is an um, object relational mapper, migration manager, REST API, Frappe also out of the box provides role permissions, emails, real-time communication, PDF generation, and so on, as you can see here. If there's something missing in Frappe, we might already be working on it right now. Um, this metadata-driven approach of the framework is the central ingredient to how the framework manages its complexity, which leads us to the core concept on which it's based. That's a doc type. So I remember when I joined Frappe, the one word I heard the most was doc type. Everyone was saying it. And in the beginning, I was pretty clueless about what everyone was going on about. And I also remember one of the first things Rushab told me about them while, was, while trying to explain was, hey, you know the best part? You could also say that a doc type is a doc type. Only later, I realized what he meant, and I started to understand the power of that one simple concept. So what is a doc type? A doc type describes the model and view of your data. Model creation in Frappe is really simple. The framework has a rich uh, user interf interface. You just have to fill a form defining all the fields and validations that you need, and the model is created for you. So a JSON file is created, which in turn creates a DB table, and it also creates a Python class that references the doc type object. Um, this is what, so yeah, a doc type not only stores the fields, but it also stores information about how data behaves in the system and how fields behave with respect to each other. And this behavior, so to speak, is the key element of the metadata driven approach of the framework. So this is what a doc type form looks like. This would create a model for a to do object. So you just have to fill the table with whatever fields and validations that you need. And the rest of the form has fields that define the behavior of the object. And that's it. The model, the entire model is created for you. Creating a doc, doc type in Frappe also generates a number of views for it. So we have a list view, which provides a simple UI to see the doc type records or documents as we call them, um, a form view to configure individual records. Also a report view for more um, advanced queries, filtering, and grouping. So these are the main ones, but we even have a calendar view, a Gantt view, a Kanban view, and also a dashboard view. Um, these are some more features that make the Frappe framework really powerful. So Frappe is built for rapid application development. That's how a small team of 20 developers have um, built a huge product like ARP Next. It really helps you ship fast. Creating models, controllers, updating views, migrations, all of them are handled out of the box by the framework. You can also build powerful extensions on top of Frappe by creating your own apps or custom apps, as we call them. Apps can bring their own models or even modify existing ones in Frappe. In ERP Next, we have over 1,000 doc types, so Frappe can definitely be used to create applications at scale. Um, Bench is the CLI built by Frappe that helps us uh, helps you to manage Frappe applications and deployments. It handles app updates, database creation and updates, creating new apps, and so much more. And Frappe also supports multi-tenancy out of the box. So I hope you got an um, overview of the Frappe framework. Now let me tell you a little about my role at Frappe. 
Everyone at Frappe is more or less full stack, but we all have our specializations based on our interests. So I had a keen interest in UI from the start. So I've been primarily contributing to the framework um, in the form of UI features. I had a chance to work on many interesting projects from smaller features that have had a large impact in improving the product UX, like keyboard navigation, to bigger UI projects like in-app notifications, the Frappe desk redesign, the desk is the landing page for all ERP Next users, and a lot of work on the dashboards in Frappe. All these projects have involved a lot of discussion about design and the product UX, and they've really helped me learn a lot and grow as a developer. The um, latest and most interesting project I'm currently working on is the complete redesign of the framework UI. So for the past four months, along with a couple of my teammates, we've been implementing a new modern design for ERP Next, but I can't reveal anything more about it yet. The developer team at Frappe is super talented and helpful. Also, most people are so young, so it's really inspiring to see the quality of work that they produce, and that's a huge motivation factor for me. Um, one important thing I've learned that I just wanted to share is, as developers, we always feel like we need to know everything about everything, and it can sometimes get really overwhelming. But I think it's important for us to accept that you will never know everything, but you will know something more every day. OK, let's get to one of the most import important principles at Frappe and the main theme of this event, free and open source software. All our projects here are 100% open source. No conditions apply. We stay true to open source, and we don't follow any open core or freemium model. Every feature we build is merged straight into the GitHub repo. So I remember a while um, before I joined Frappe, I was so overwhelmed by the huge GitHub repos I saw and the idea of contributing code to the millions of lines of already existing code there was. I never imagined that soon I would be a maintainer of one such repo and would not only be sending huge PRs, but reviewing other people's as well. As I've mentioned, um, as you know, at Frappe, all our code is on GitHub, which of course means that all contributions are public. And the fact that all my code is public is personally one of the biggest motivators for me to focus on improving code quality. At Frappe, also quality of code is given a lot of importance. Um, code reviews here are usually very detailed and have personally played a huge role in my development. At Frappe, non-developers are also encouraged to contribute in the form of small content fixes or to documentation. Most consultants here know the basic Git flow. Um, we also have an active community that provides tons of feedback and contributes in the form of PRs and even code reviews. So all of this really embodies the inclusive spirit of FOSS. Um, on this slide, we have some GitHub stats about the Frappe organization. It's ranked as number one in the entire country for JavaScript and number six in Python. So these are some pretty impressive numbers. Um, we also have a community forum with over 11,000 all-time users for which we use Discourse. So if any of you are interested in contributing or becoming a part of our community, that's a great place to start. Um, that's all I have. Thanks. I hope you all enjoyed the talk. I wanted to say thanks to Kailash, um, Rishabh, and all of the organizing team for setting up this really great event. It's really nice to see so many participants and such cool project ideas being worked on. So good luck for the rest of the hackathon. And just in case it wasn't already obvious enough, we are hiring. So feel free to check out our jobs page on sape.io. Thank you. Thank you, Prasanna. That was a wonderful talk. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thanks.